Hey, what's going on everyone, Greg here, and it's been a few weeks from the announcement of the M2 Max, and it's taken a little bit for that to sink in. We are about to get the new M2 MacBook Air, and first the M2 MacBook Pro, and those are going to be the most popular M2 Macs that Apple will announce. Apple said it themselves, the M2 MacBook Air was the best-selling laptop, the M2 MacBook Pro was the second best-selling laptop, but still, there are a couple M2 Macs that weren't announced at this event, and when I started to actually think about it, I started to wonder why, considering this would be a pretty simple upgrade. So for this video, I kind of wanted to talk about where are the rest of the M2 Macs that are supposed to be in this lineup? And of course, I am talking about the M2 Mac Mini and the M2 iMac. Now, both of those are still running on the M1 chip. Now, when Apple originally introduced the M1 chip, they announced it by showing off three computers together. The MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, that sounds familiar, we just saw those two with the M2 announcement, but they also announced the Mac Mini alongside of it. But this time around, the M2 is not in the Mac Mini, and it was conspicuously missing from that upgrade lineup. It's left a lot of people wondering, in particular, where is that Mac Mini, when it was among the first M1 Macs to be announced? Well, there's a couple theories out there. The first is that the new Mac Mini is going to have a new redesign that will have an overall smaller and flatter profile than the Mac Mini we have now, possibly with even more ports, and that Apple did not have this design ready to ship in time for when they showed off uh, the last two Macs at WWDC, and they could only focus on the redesign of one Mac, and that would be the M2 MacBook Air. The second theory, and I think this is way more likely, is that Apple is currently facing chip shortages with the M2 chip, and Apple just didn't have enough supply of the M2 chip to launch a third product. I'll repeat myself again, Apple said it themselves at their event, the M1 MacBook Air is the world's best-selling laptop, and the M1 MacBook Pro is the world's second best-selling laptop, so they need a lot of those M2 chips, probably more than they can currently manufacture, just to be able to have enough supply to be able to launch these products. And really, you only need to look at the pre-order situation of the 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro to get an idea of just how supply-constrained Apple is with their components right now, because when Apple opened up pre-orders for these M2 Macs, they only had the base model configurations with 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabyte of storage available to be purchased for the day one release. If you wanted that M2 chip spec'd with more memory, well, Apple didn't have orders of those MacBook Pros ready until the end of July or early August. And this isn't the old days where memory is a separate component. On Apple Silicon, the memory is unified and integrated directly into the M2 chip itself, so Apple is obviously facing some sort of supply issues with those high and memory configurations of the M2 chip. Taking all that into consideration, we may have a bit of a wait for the next M2 Max to come out. And just like we are seeing a staggered release between the M2 MacBook Pro and the M2 MacBook Air, they weren't launched on the same day, we're still waiting for the announcement of the M2 MacBook Air's release date, I think it's possible we will see a staggered release of the M2 desktop Macs with the Mac Mini and the iMac. So let's make this less convoluted because even I'm a little confused by my own wordy explanation here. I'm sorry, I, I am not that smart to condense it all down, but theoretically, barring a major redesign, Apple could release an M2 Mac Mini or M2 iMac at pretty much any time right now uh, as long as these M2 chips aren't in a supply constraint. I fully believe that these Macs are ready to be launched they don't seem that complicated to make. Apple could just swap the M1 chip in both of these products with an M2 chip and call it a day, much like they did with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. They obviously didn't have a problem with that. They literally didn't change anything about that computer. They didn't even remove the touch bar, which is obviously well on its way out, and they just put an M2 chip in there and released it like uh, like, like an upgrade, like a, like a spec bump, like you would do in the old days when you had new Intel processors or new graphics cards. Well, Apple did the same thing here with the 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro. It stands to reason they would have no problem doing that that with a new Mac Mini, and definitely no problem doing that with a 24-inch iMac, which just got a redesign last year, so there's no expectations of a major redesign for that product. It's obviously just going to be a very simple spec bump kind of update. Now, maybe you could argue the Mac Mini is getting a redesign, so maybe that's pushing that farther out, 
But even so, I'm not even sure if that's going to get a redesign after seeing the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, that might not be a helpful answer on when the release date of these M2 Macs is going to be, but it's the honest truth. Apple could release these Macs at any time. And if supply for the M2 chip increases, it's likely we could see these Macs announced in even the coming months. And it's not like these Macs would have different configurations. If they just have the M2 chip, they would have the same configurations we currently see on the M2 Pro and the Air, meaning an eight core CPU with 10 GPU cores and a maximum of 24 gigabytes of memory. And for base level specs, I am actually really excited to see the increase for these desktop M2 machines. The increase in maximum amount of memory is going to be a nice addition to these entry level lineup desktops, especially on the M1 Mac Mini, which kind of became a workhorse computer at a great price point. So not only will the M2 version of this computer have more CPU and GPU power, but more memory means it can fit into more roles, especially in a pro or creative workflow. And I really think if Apple keeps pricing similar to the M1 Mac Mini, especially if there's no major redesign around this product, it is going to continue to be the choice of many Mac users who want the best performance to price ratio. And it's likely that the Mac Mini will be unbeatable in that territory. Now, there is perhaps one more Mac theoretically in this lineup that could be getting this M2 chip and perhaps go beyond that with an M2 Pro chip. That would be the Intel Mac Mini, which Apple still has available on their website for $1,099. Yeah, that's a terrible deal. Do not buy that computer. All right, now there's currently a few rumors saying that Apple plans to have a higher specced out version of this M2 Mac Mini available this time around, and they plan for it to go up to the M2 Pro chip, whereas the Mac Studio would be that bump up to the M1 Max chip. Currently, rumors suggest that the M2 Pro chip will be an even bigger leap than M1 to M2, and the M2 Pro will have 12 CPU cores instead of 10, along with 19 GPU cores in instead of the current Max of 16. Perhaps this could be another reason for the holdup of the M2 Mac Mini. If Apple plans to give multiple chip options for this Mac Mini, well, they might not show it off until the M2 Mac Mini with the M2 Pro chip is ready. If that's true, we could have quite a wait that would take us to the end of the year or perhaps even early next year with the best rumors right now saying that Apple is planning to show off the new M2 Pro and M2 Max chips around November with a refresh of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. I'm not sure how Apple will choose to unveil this Mac mini and whether or not it will uh, wait for those higher end chips to be ready, but it seems pretty clear to me that Apple has some sort of plans for a higher end version of the Mac mini that isn't the Mac Studio. I mean, I just look at that Intel Mac mini on their website and think, okay, that has to be replaced by something and an M2 Pro Mac mini, it just makes all sorts of sense to me. Maybe we will have two different Mac mini designs. I mean, we could have one with the same design where it will be the M2 chip focused on keeping a lower price point and then maybe a redesigned one uh, that will support things like additional ports. I mean, that could be very possible because an M2 Pro Mac mini could definitely support more ports than the current M1 uh, or a future M2 Mac Mini, especially considering that the M2 chip in the new Air and Pro are still limited to just one external display through Thunderbolt. I feel like an M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini would have at least three to four Thunderbolt ports, and it should definitely be able to drive at least two of Apple's studio displays. So yeah, I'm kind of thinking that the M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini might be the one to receive a design change, and the regular M2 Mac Mini could keep the same exact design it currently has. And then again, something like the 24 inch iMac, it just got a major redesign. So I think that's just due for an M2 spec bump as well. Uh, so maybe we'll actually get the M2 iMac announced before the Mac mini. But all right, so far that is what we know about the rumors of the current M2 Mac mini and the M2 iMac. But I want to know, what do you think in the comments below? Do you think we will see these M2 Macs announced within the coming months? Or do you think we're going to have to wait until the end of the year or possibly even early next year before we get an announcement? Also, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you want to see the first tests of this M2 chip, well, make sure you're subscribed. It's going to be an exciting time because we got the MacBook Pro, the M2 version coming in by the end of this week. That's going to be the first M2 Max where we can test out all the performance. So we're gonna test that thing like crazy. So make sure you're subscribed and hopefully I'll see you at that video. So take care until next time.